So, so we're in a time where different people have really strong feelings around the world that they do want to live in and the narrative that they're holding. And there's clashes. I mean, we've seen, you know, people who were once friends now become enemies, you know, like they're not talking to each other. Families are not seeing each other, communicating with each other. I mean, things that we held is like, well, these are, these are true bonds have been sort of ripped apart in the process of this. And, and I remember a question that was asked to you about what humility is, right? And you said one thing that's common of different narratives is that, you know, they all tend to think that they're right, right? The people who are carrying the narrative and that when we, when we look at narratives other than our own, rather than listening to, you know, by listening to these narratives and taking them on their own terms, that's humility. So there's, there's, there's this the ideal that we come into dialogue and conversation around the the kind of world that we want to create and the values we want to embody and but beneath that before there's even a willingness or in the absence of the willingness how do we listen with humility to the narratives that others are holding in a time such as this you know what's the art of doing that how do we do it well while still standing with our own personal conclusions Yeah, humility is a side effect of sincerely seeking the truth where you care more about learning something that you hadn't known before than you care about having been right. Uh, and it comes from also understanding, I mean, here's a, it's a side effect again of another truth, which is that that people do people make the choices that they make as a result of the circumstances that they're in mm. not that the circumstances determine their choice but it comes from those circumstances the choice comes from those circumstances so it's a, recogni a recognition that if i were in your circumstances i might do very well might do as you do mm -hmm. so then from that comes curiosity Mm -hmm. Okay, here you believe something totally different from me. What is it like to be you? Mm -hmm. What has contributed to your belief that so contradicts mine? What I find, though, when I go into this is that the process of belief formation is very rarely uh, anything remotely rational. It has to do with psychology. Uh, and in the last essay series that I spent pretty much all this year writing, um, I uh, related to mob psychology, um, the, the desire to belong and the instinctive um, fear that we have of being part of an ostracized or victimized subclass. Um, um, a scapegoat. Uh, it's actually in human history, it's been not only uncomfortable, um, but dangerous to diverge from group values and norms. Because when something goes wrong, who do they blame? Who do they offer up to the gods as a sacrifice, as a representative of sin, as a representative of evil, as a representative of wrongness and criminality? It's those who deviate from the group norms. Mm -hmm. And I see a lot of that happening today. So when people cleave to one or another of these polar uh, opinion identities, there's a lot more going on than some dispassionate, rational evaluation of evidence. Mm -hmm. uh, and if we don't recognize this, then... Uh, I mean, as the saying goes, you can't reason somebody out of a belief that they didn't reason themselves into to begin with. Mm.